Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Queen's Wish. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we visit the Vol. Is it the Vol? It is the Vol. And we go to a city. We go finally to, I think, the main capital of, of the main capital. That's, you know, just, you know, that, that is indeed what, what the, yes, absolutely. The main capital of the Vol. And uh, we're going to have to deal with uh, allegiances and things. My God, let, look at the... Look at how many things I left behind. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, Colonel. What are you doing? I thought I had this done. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I didn't. Um, and also, it's sort of funny because I know exactly why I left it behind. Because I'm afraid of cities, honestly. Um, the Ahreal built a healthy fear of, of, of cities on me. Look at what I'm doing right now. Right now, as I say, there is an abandoned mine here. Burrowed uh, into the stone. And the cliff face. I think that's the first time in my life that I pronounced that word properly, borrowed. I think I just didn't pronounce it. Anyway, you light a torch and poke around inside. It's a bunch of empty tunnels, nothing of value. Hey, a bunch of empty tunnels is something of value? What are you talking about? This, this narrator. This narrator, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, and we have the same thing. You walk down a long stretch of caves. You find rusty tools, abandoned tunnels, and a scattering of dry old lizard scales. You are about to give up and leave, and then, in the deepest chamber, you find a, a, a cache of stones. It's mostly just a jumble of granite and quartz. There are, however, semi-precious stones scattered among the rubble. Isn't quartz semi-precious? Because I know there's some... Either way, you, you, if you spent some time, you could gather them. And I do gather them. You pick up a nice assortment of semi-precious gems. It takes an hour, but you should be able to trade them in for some coin. You also find a piece of polished quartz with a rune etched in the side. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and the tunnel is fine. Um, the tunnel is becoming claustro claustrophobic. Is that how it works? Is that Does that work like that? Because I... I don't know that it works like that. Anyway, as you try to slip out of the cave with your treasure, you hear hissing. A swarm of lizards has has this is a swarm um, has slipped into the tunnel behind you, cutting you off. They are hungry, and I will murder them now because, well, they they are hungry. So, you know, that's just how that works. Do I have my speakers on? I don't have my speakers on. Good, good, good for me. Then for the, the video, really. Uh, so I will be able to attack a lot of you over here. I will want to be as far up north as I can, because that is going to allow me... Yes, that is going to allow me to... Hurt them all down here. I think all of these are dead, hopefully. The poison over time is really never... Rarely ever a, uh, a particularly reliable effect, unfortunately. Okay, so what can I do? We can get a lot of bacon from there, I think. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, that is a two action point, one action point. Get a whirlwind that is going to hit there. That is pretty good. And uh, I thought for a moment there that Jeff was going to have another turn, but that was not to be. Very unfortunate. And uh, Mario is stunned. Must not forget. And we got a confusion back here. Not necessarily a bad thing. Let's get over here, another whirlwind, and uh, hopefully they're all poisoned and are all going to die. Although I doubt that's actually going to happen. I should have attacked one of these. Oh, look at that. She was uh, confused and she didn't do anything. You see? The poison killed one of them, but it didn't kill the other. We're good. No, no, ra no narration at the end. Hiccups, though. Always a lot of hiccups. Okay, so let's go to the city, people. Yeah, these people don't say anything. A little bit weird. I'm used to them saying you know, saying things. I, it might be that I talked to them already. But either way, let's just look around. Got a lot of farms. Got a lot of cabbages. Cabbage patches, really. These people are very... They're very uh, big fans of uh, of the fiber of the, in, in the cabbages. Cause they're very fibros. Food. Hmm... You enter the city, not proud, definitely not, of Taberlen, a massive edifice of... Well, a city is an edifice. That is... Edifice means building, by the way. Um, it, it can mean other things in very specific contexts, and I think this context might be one of those. But either way, a massive 
city of countless tons of stone perched on the west coast of the Vol. This is the capital, the main capital, of the loyal half of... Oh, the loyal half of the country. The loyal. Yeah. Uh, this is where the Masha rule from. This is where they get... Uh, they can be best negotiated with. Wherever you go, there are glances and worried whispers. The loyalists here have heard rumors that you are not on their side in this war. Yeah, but they're not going to attack me, so I'm fine. Um, what do we have? Tab to show me what's going on. The council waits for you, says that guard over there. And we also have some bread. Let's go say hi to the bread. Rinsen. Rimsen, rather. Not Rin. Rim. Rimsen. Over there. And a door that leads outside. And uh, some upper level with lock! Exclamation mark. And uh, nobody here. Okay. It's good. It's important to know because that, you know, I don't need to go up, up there. The Tablen Arms is full. That's the name of the inn, apparently. Is full of visitors. There, yeah, sure. There are Masha refugees, enterprising mercenaries, and alert traders, all looking for a way to escape or profit from the war. Surprisingly, or both maybe, surprisingly, you are forced to actually wait your turn with the innkeeper. Doesn't he know who you are? The innkeeper says, I'm Rimzen. What do you want? We have one free room for five gold. That's actually, I think, the cheapest room ever. A round of drinks is three. Three gold, I assume. How's business? Busy? As you can see, too busy to talk. This is the capital of loyal vol lands everything circles around here most of the business is from masha from the masha because they're a cast um they realize he says they realize that their owen want to slit their throats and they flee to the safety of the city hmm mm, it's interesting how is the war going good we hear that the masha are doing well victory is due any minute I mean, that's what they have been telling us for years, but it'll have to be true eventually. Where do the fleeing Masha eventually end up? I mean, I assume besides his inn. They stay here. Apparently, that's just his inn. Uh, Till they run out of money. Then they go begging to the, the... Don't they become Owen then? Because of that? Come on. Come on. No, it, it, no they don't. Because... There's no consistency to the... Anyway, uh, then they go begging to the refugee center, and then they're given a barn or something to hide in until the war is over. He's going impatient, apparently. Got lots of customers. You need anything? Uh, no. Rims and nods. Then he walks off to help an impatient Masha. Yeah. He's got lots of customers. I saw three of them. That's that's a lot. Uh, we don't we don't worry about it. It's just... it's it's uh, It's supposed to be... An abstraction, you know what I mean? You need to, you know, it's fine. It's, it's just fine. You don't want a lot of people blocking your way because they do block your way. Uh, you know, it's just if you move and then somebody is there, you get immediately stopped and it's very annoying. Uh, that stone block is not mine. Guess what? I don't need it. And I don't want it. What do we have over here? Manishta is the person that we have over here. The only person. There's, a, there's, there's a... Yeah, This hall is full of exhausted Masha refugees. They fled their homes and came here, hoping to escape the vengeance of the Owen. You thread your way through them, looking for someone in charge. A man walks up to you, staring down at his clipboard. He says without looking up, I am Anishta. Welcome to safety. Point of origin? What do you mean? Point of origin. Place you fled from. He uses a stick of graphite to mark, uh, to make a mark on a scroll. Well, uh, I just came here, uh, I just came from Central Vault. Manishta writes this down, that down. Understood. Most refugees are from there now. Bloody place. Do you have a farm? I don't, I don't have a farm. Also, the, why would they have a farm? I know why they would have a farm, but why, 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 why would you want to write that into the game? Come on, <laughs> like the game doesn't miss an opportunity to make it an obvious uh, analog for slavery down here in the vault. 
and even down to the plantations. They didn't call it plantation. That's good, uh, because then it would be really on the nose. But as it is, it's uh, it's still on the nose. Why would they have a? Don't you guys have other things? Also, wait a minute. Doesn't the vault primarily trade in stone? I think so. <laughs> yeah, that it, it. Yeah, it's even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew. I knew it. It, uh, it. It sounded weird enough that he assumes that I have a farm. First off, he assumes I'm a Masha, but that makes sense because obviously it's you know this is where the Masha refugees go. Um, although calling it refugees is. Whatever we can call it, whatever. Uh, but yeah, the the Agriel trade in wood because they have a lot of wood. The Vol trade in stone because they have a lot of sand. Uh, and the um, I forget the name of the the less than people on the northwest trade in iron because they have a lot of water. That's that's how that works. Um, yeah, I don't have a farm, just a couple of forts. Manishta starts to write something and then stops. He looks up at you. Oh, you aren't Vol. Apologies. You are Havenite? Ah, oh, I understand. Welcome to Tarlachan's Refugee Admission Center. We are very busy. What do you do here, besides admitting? As the war gets worse month by month, Masha families have been fleeing for their lives from the vicious Owen. Most of them come here. We resettle them, giving them a safe place to live until the war is won. I am glad you visited. We have a special need, and Haven might be able to help it. Uh, you have a special need from Haven. Hmm. How, besi before that, how are things going for the Masha? Besides what you just... I keep, like, ask. It's like I'm... It's like the... <laughs> it's like the questions I ask are, are the questions to the answer he just gave every time. He's just like, oh, my name is... Uh, my name is Manishta, and I say, what is your name? And he's like, I live here since I was a kid. Have you lived here long? I ask. It's just weird. Uh, he says, well, we are not losing. Then again, we are not winning. The only stale, the ugly stalemate has gone on for years. Every day, more law-abiding, honorable Masha are waking up with cut throats. That, that's, I know, I realize it, I made it sound, they're not waking up, like, they didn't, Sleep with a cut throats. They, their throats are cut. So I could have said their throats cut. In in in, but I didn't. I'm sorry. I'm I phrase things very weirdly every once in a while. It's just to throw you off to make sh make sure you're on your, you know, you you're paying attention. It's like the. Either way, that is why Haven is so uh, welcome here. If you help us, it will result in a lot of gold for Haven scoffers. You mentioned, you mentioned you have a special need from Haven? Alas, many of our Masha have lived sheltered lives. They are not used to the hard lives of refugees. The bonds, the cold, the rough bell blankets, the labor. They have to work to pay their way. After all, it is the fall way. But what would you need from Haven? We could use... More civilized workers and servants. They could make our masher more comfortable. Help them with the work they need to do. Without being Owen, I mean. We can't really trust Owen these days. Oh, look at that. I am... It, it soothes my soul that he said the word these days. And it actually makes a lot of sense. Finally. Thank you very much, video, video game. You're very... I'm, I'm, oof, I like that a lot. Usually when I, I, I have a gripe with this, with the, with this, because it's, uh, it's very easy to write stories where you know there, there's, it's a time of upheaval in the world that you're writing a story in, right? Um, that's usually how stories go. Otherwise, you wouldn't write a story. about I mean, there are also stories in times of peace and, and that, and it's totally fine to write that as well. It just takes a little bit more originality and and talent. Um, but not to say that you know. Stories in times of upheaval are are unoriginal or talentless, but uh, a lot of them are. Uh, it just you know the best stories are are in times of upheaval and 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 uh, what what I mean to say is characters going ah these days everything is going to shit. It's it's very it's very common. You know what I mean. Uh, but it also is very very often used not wrongly I suppose because 
well, it is also very common that stories are, as I said, as I just said, it's very common that stories, video games are, in, in stories in general, are told in, in times of upheaval in the world that they're set in. But I, I just, I don't like that sentence, and, and it just feels cheap. This time it doesn't, because it actually tell it, it feels cheap because of course it's these days, and it's just having characters say, "Oh, these days this and this days that," gets old very very fast. Especially, especially because you know I don't know maybe just me, but is it am I wrong in saying that I grew up hearing just old people say stuff these days every every once in a while, and they don't live in times of upheaval, or they didn't. I mean maybe they did live, but not at me, not as I grew up. It wasn't times of upheaval. It was just them being rambunctious about the kids these days uh so it just it always feels like the kids this day these days but in this case it doesn't it tells you this is this is this is important it's it, i mean it's something we know already but it is also it, it is important we can't really trust owen these days is him saying you know their slaves are in a rebellious mood and it is true that they are in a rebellious mood and that they it also tells us that they used to trust the owens which is you know Yes, that is uh, that is more or less. Even though there's a lot more rebel uprisings than history tells, uh, or that in 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 real life, um, it, it it makes sense that they would work like that. Uh, we aren't going. Yeah, they, he is also asking for slaves. Oh man, this this dialogue here is good, because um, he he made it, it. It's not on the nose and weird like uh, other Vol dialogue, especially the. The whole dialogue right at the beginning of the map, or of, of when I say map, I mean the the whole country, really, <laughs> the the whole southwest or south area of the map, because um, you know it's very obvious. You you, you, you know it leads you on very easily, and you're like, oh, I I know what you mean. No, no, he's he's uh, he said it in um, he said it he he centered the way uh, the reason why I think his dialogue is well written. Um, is because he centers the the masha rather than centering the slaves, and that is the trick. And I think that is the reason why the that that is absolutely. I, I I as I'm saying this, that is absolutely the reason why the the people in the northwest. What are they called? You know the people the the less than human people. You know the ones in the swamps. Yeah, I think that's why their dialogue is so bad. Because it very, very often doesn't center people outside of their country. It centers themselves. And they're always saying, oh, we're rubbish. Oh, we're bad. We don't have potions. You know, it's just, you know the, it's, every dialogue is like that. There's very, it's very rare that they center people outside. Which is what happens when, um, when you have a, a, a sense of inferiority. You're not, you're not just putting yourself down all the time. You're, you're putting other people up. Um, I mean, at least if you're not going to just be blatantly annoying, uh, which is what the, the people in the Northwest uh, are, is they're blatantly annoying. Uh, and also the, the Vol here, they're with their pride and whatnot. But here he's just, he's really focusing the mashup and he's just sort of like leaving this this uh, bit about the Owens in the, main, uh, uh, in the end. And it's good, it's good, it's just, it's good. He's asking for slaves, is what he's asking. Um, so once uh, you are a vassal, our people can come here to find work. Don't worry, we'll find a way to have you Owen again. Yeah, so basically it's an option here, and uh, I'm just going to say the first one. Uh, and I'm going to say slaves, and um, this is this is a tr this is a tough test. Uh, because I hope he, do he, he doesn't go back to what we know already of him being like, Oh, there aren't slaves! It, m for two reasons. Because we know that already, I don't want to hear that again. Uh, because it's annoying in the first place. Then also because we know that already. But also, the other reason is... Um, because he's going to talk about pride. Oh, they're not slaves, they're proud. I hope he doesn't. And uh, that is the test. This is a test for this dialogue. He's going to come off as the best written character if he passes this test. Otherwise, he's just, you know, that was pretty good lines. Manishta lets out an angry, hissing noise. It, he farts. He just, he just fart, farted very angrily. There are no slaves in the vault. Mm, never have been, never will be. It is offensive for you to suggest we could we would ever have slaves. That is rebel language. Your views are clear, though. I will not ask for you your help again. Okay, so that wasn't a perfect pass, but it was a, nif a different take. Um, it's mild, mildly, uh, mildly satire, a little bit, with the whole. It's offensive for you to suggest that we're sl uh, slave owners. Uh, I like that. It's kind of good. But what I really like out of this, I mean, I didn't like that he goes back to that, uh, but I suppose, you know, it can be helped. 
Mudanai. Uh, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's it, that it um, that is rebel language again. That's that's you know that's something we don't know. It's, yeah, this is this dialogue is good. That one that one right there is good. Uh, he, he also has a clipboard, which I think is mildly anachronistic, but what are you whatever. So I go back to that. I guess special need. I have another question. There it is. No, that's it. That's it. Yeah, he just wants slaves, and um, yeah, pretty good. I like that. I I wish I had come here before, although maybe I don't actually. Saving the best for last is is a good thing. A massive stone hall looms above you to the north. This is the great council hall of the Masha. All vol wealthy enough to have Owen are allowed here to talk and squabble and rule the country. Masha and messengers flow in and out, each hoping to have some small part in steering this unruly war-torn country. This is where you will... It's interesting that it, the narrator says unruly. Hmm. I think it might be a throwaway thing. I, th I I thought this country was actually portrayed as supposed to be, like, abiding by rules. And it's like the tradition is, is more rule-abiding than normal. And, and the rebels are, even themselves, in their rebellion, are, are abiding by certain rules. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, not obviously the, not the slave-owning rules, but still. This is where you will need to deal with the Masha if you want them to serve Haven again. Uh, I will. I do not want them to serve Haven again. It's pretty obvious that anybody that sides with them, Haven included, is uh, just a, a trash, awful, awful people. But then again, we, we, the way we treated the non-people in the Northwest, what are they called? The Ukat, that's right. Um, yeah, we, we have a precedent there. So can, I can't open that, can I? Because I tried to. I think some people got in the way. No, the door is locked. It's fine. It doesn't say lock, exclamation mark. This workshop features the finest crafts of the Vol. There is fine iron armor, samples of good building stone, and similar products. Those... I'm not sure what... It's like... There's there's lovely marmalade here. Um, a very nice built chair, and some similar products. It's like, what, what is similar about fine iron armor and good building stone? <laughs> Anyway, the shopkeeper slides up next to you. I am Ahimele Owen. I see the honored envoy has come to see the fine products of our war-torn land. Please allow me to show what we have to offer. Uh, yeah, tell me about the Vol's wares. I'm sure you have already seen the quality of Volstone. It is all around us, after all. You should know that we also make excellent arms and armor. <clears throat> and my throat is dying. Free of the flaws of Ukatish equipment, we have much of uh, to offer now that you have returned. I don't know about these flaws in the Ukatish equipment. Ukatish weapons have some good qualities, I suppose. However, it is crude and ugly. It is crude and ugly. What is it? We'll never know. And their armor, quite frankly, smells bad. Not the sort of thing for a proper noble warrior. Uh, what, do you, what do you have to offer, Haven? Good weaponry and stone in bulk without the trouble of having it shipped expensively from the rest of the known world. Should you choose to help the Masha, you will have first priority. That's how, what priority means. It's first. To, uh, cause, yeah, anyway, um, to get all of the best work of our, our artisans. And what about Owen? She's confused. Yes, I am an Owen to the Masha who owns this shop. I will work hard and wait. Were you asking if you can buy Owen? I'm sure that was not a serious request. I am paying off a debt. I am not a slave. I'm pretty sure... Okay, so the game has explained how buying Owen works. You buy their debt. In the sense that you pay for their debt. Because as far as I can tell, that's what it is. If, you get, if you're indebted to somebody, you become their Owen. So, yeah, basically. So if you want that Owen, you pay their debt, and then the Owen has to pay you. And that has been... That, that is how it works. Now, obviously, that is on the face of it. You're buying slaves. 
but they have a, a different way of saying it. Um, so that you know, it's, this is just the game being uh, going back to them being. Oh, I'm not slaves. I still have my pride. Um, so it's not actually a revolutionary, or it's not a revolutionary. What I mean is, it's not a, contradict, a contradictory statement here. It's totally fine. Um, so uh, anyway, I'd like to see where's. Yes, I would. I would like to sell something. I, I would actually like to sell something. Because that sucks. Uh, that doesn't suck, though. And we have a lot of things that very well might suck. We've had to plate armor. Sucks. Volbron's helm. Bad. Bad helm. Should feel bad. And uh, helm of the woods plus life drain. But it's, it's generally bad, and uh, we don't like it. Bludgeon senseless hit chance. Nah. Do we like that? We might like that, actually. Either way. Uh, show me... No, that's not what I want. What are the questions? Yeah. Freaking hell. Just, what is the... Let me see your wares. Ah, there it is. Ah, forgive me, Havenite. I have had word from the main council hall. You are not to have access to our finest goods until the matter of the Vol's, Vol's status with Haven is settled to our liking. I can still purchase things from you, though. That's very nice. That's very nice. However, we're out of time for the day, so uh, we're going to need to settle that matter in the next episode. For right now, I'm Curl RPG, and this has been Quinn's Wish. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.